Uh, right now, I'd like to bring, and it is with pride that I do so, uh, to the airways, former Assemblyman uh, Dov Hyken, a great guy, veteran Democratic Assemblyman representing Borough Park, Brooklyn, son of Holocaust survivors, and a great American. Dov, welcome back to the show. Always uh, proud to talk to you, my friend. Uh, thank you, Joe. It's uh, always uh, great uh, to be with you. Well, uh, the private sector, Dov, it's funny, you're, you're, you're in the private sector now. Are you enjoying it? <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, uh, most people tell me uh, you're more active and busier than uh, the 36 years you were, uh, you know, in public office. Look, uh, I'm involved in a variety of things, but most important to my heart is the well-being of this country, the well-being of my community. And, and when I see injustice, when I see things happening that are so outrageous and so sick and so unhealthy for our country, you know, uh, I'm obligated. I don't have a choice. I need to speak up. I need to fight for the things that are important. And, and, and Joe, as you know, there is so much going on every single day, you know, anti-Semitism, oh, racism. Lord, Lord, it's unbelievable. Give us, the, give us, give us your, your, your take on the controversy with the city council, if you would, sir. Well, look, a uh, member of the city council, uh, you know, made some remarks uh, uh, on Twitter. Uh, what he basically said was, uh, these were his words, that there is no Palestine. And he also made comments about that uh, Omar, Congresswoman Omar from Minnesota, is an anti-Semite. Uh, let's go backwards. The fact that uh, Omar is an anti-Semite, I mean, who's going to debate that? Is, is there a debate about that based on what she has said, based on her direct comments about, uh, about Jews and Jew Jewish power and Jewish control and over, you know, Jewish influence? I mean, she has used the kind of language that our enemies historically, right. the, the most vicious anti-Semites have used throughout history. So I don't, wh wh why was that a problem? It, it's just a fact. The other thing that uh, was even more controversial to, to many, and when I say controversial, you know, today there are the uh, the PC police, politically correct, who measure and you know examine every single word, and if it doesn't coincide with what they believe, you're in trouble. You know, you get you get criticized, you get ostracized, you get condemned, you, you get called all kinds of names. You're a racist. You're this. You're that. You know, they make that decision. It's basically progressive liberals, Democrats, most of the time. Uh, and what Yeager said was, there is no Palestine. He didn't say there weren't Palestinian people. Okay, there yeah. are Palestinian people. He made a yeah. historical a comment that is is historically correct. But you, I, you know, I I challenged everyone I spoke to, from media to people out there. Is there a Palestine? If, if there is, please tell me where. Where is there a Palestine? Now, there, Joe, there may be a Palestine in the future if there's ever peace negotiations mm -hmm. and the Israelis and the Palestinians make peace. Uh, th there may be a Palestinian entity, but there is no Palestine. And, and Joe, you know, one of the most interesting things, again, it's not Dove Hyken's point of view or, or Joe's point of view. Where does the word Palestine even come from? You know, that, you know, the Palestinian people, where does the word Palestine come from? And it goes back about 2,000 years ago <clears throat> when the Jewish people were forced out of their homes in a place called Judea, in Israel. They were forced out by the Romans, and the Romans wanted the Jews to forget their connection to their land, meaning the land of Israel called Judea. They changed the name of Judea, of Israel. Guess what? The Romans did this. Mm -hmm. They called it Palestine, just to you know, create the disconnection for Jews. Hey, Jews, forget about this area. They called it Palestine. The original Palestinians, Joe, mm -hmm. yes, are the Jews. <laughs> you know, oh, they were the man. Palestinian you know Jews. What, Dub, it's, walk me through this, and we've chatted about this in person and on the air at uh, 10 minutes after 8 o'clock with uh, Dove Hyken, uh, with Joe Piscopo. So what is it? And, and, and I, don't, I know, and I, and I really, and I talk to you listening now, is that I think my, my allegiance to Israel, to the state of Israel, and certainly to the Jewish community, I was brought up with all Jewish guys from Philadelphia, by the way, Dove. You know, all those guys from Philly. And, they, and my buddy Michael, Dr., now Dr. 
Thundercats would go to the temple on Friday. I t- I've explained all this on the air, and I've, I've, I've learned to appreciate the, the Jewish heritage like that and to defend it. And Because when you go to Israel, and I saw how Israel is really truly our only uh, friend in the Middle East, where is this from the Democrats, Dolph, the Democrat, the liberal Democrats that have always been so pro-Israel, like Chuck Schumer. Where is this scary, very, very similar to 1936 anti-Semitic rise coming from? How did it start? And it's it's only it's very, very recent that this is happening, Dove. And uh, why is it, that, sir? It, it, Joe, it, there's always been anti-Semitism. There was always racism. That's part of you know. That's part of life. But, but your, po- your point that it's po- – I'm sorry to interrupt, though, but your point is – I just get fired up about it. You're right. They, it's like it, there's a political correctness, and it's, now it's gone it, to an – Out of control. Yeah, out of control. It's out of control. Into, into yeah. this anti-Semitic wave. How the heck yeah. did we get and, here? And, yeah, and in particular, look, there's, there's a problem with uh, anti-Semitism on the right. No question about that, and it should be called out. But it is being featured today in prime time on the political left. Mm. <clears throat> and what's so interesting, Joe, this is uh, the irony. You know, if you're a progressive liberal, what does that mean? That you're open-minded. You're willing to listen to other people's points of view. And if there's one thing I've learned in the world of politics in my life over the last 40 years, it's that the least open-minded people that I have ever met are liberal progressives. As long as you have their <clears throat> point of view, they are fine. But these open-minded people who are supposed to tolerate that people have another point of view, be it on abortion, be it on so many different issues, suddenly you become the enemy. And, Joe, things have gone downhill. And the Democratic Party, unfortunately, not all Democrats, but the Democratic Party as a whole, uh, is an embarrassment to me uh, t- uh, today. And I, and I just want to say that, and I hope to play a role in this uh, in the 2020 election mm-hmm. uh, in places like Florida and other places where I will go out and speak, but Democrats, I'm not telling Democrats abandon the Democratic Party, but I am telling Democrats take a vacation from the Democratic Party for 2020. Take a vacation. The Democratic Party is not serving our interests. When you know, I can I can deal with anti-Semites, with the Omars of the world and Taleb, or Ocasio Cortez. I can deal with those people. What I can't deal with is when so-called decent people, whether it's a Senator Schumer, whether it's a Jerry Nadler, whether it's a Congressman Schiff, and on and on and on and on, when they cannot stand up unequivocally and call out what is going on in their own party, Joe, they couldn't pass a freaking resolution against anti-Semitism. They had to water it down with 14 different groups. That is... That is insane and a perfect indication of how the Democratic Party has lost its way. So I'm saying to people out there, hey, you've been a loyal Democrat. You want to stay a Democrat? Mm. Okay, but take a vacation from the Democratic Party for the next two years. In 2020, I mean, to reelect Democrats at this point, with everything going on, what happened in New York, Yeager was on the Immigration Committee. He was removed from the Immigration Committee. I mean, you have this great editorial in the Daily News, which is a pretty liberal newspaper, basically urging the city council uh, speaker not to remove Yeager. You know, didn't any of these guys ever hear of the concept of freedom of speech? Yeah. And I mean, what did, Yeager, what did Yeager say? You know, remarkably, Joe, what Yeager said is correct. By the way, did you hear anybody argue that he wasn't correct? Yeah, that no. what Yeager said that there is a, there is no Palestine, there is no Palestine. Show me where Palestine is. Do me a favor. Tell me where is it? Can someone point it out? Well, what do you do too when this representative Omar? It's so weird to call her a representative. I mean, she goes in. She's totally an anti semite. She goes in. She's in the United States House of Representatives. Then she does a fundraiser for Care. Man, she does a fundraiser for Care. No one says anything. You're right. Nadler doesn't we, say anything. We, Chuck we, Schumer listen, doesn't say anything. A lot of huh? Joe, a lot of these groups that are supporting Omar Talib. Uh, I'm looking at a lot of material. There's a lot going to come out. 
regarding the association of some of these uh, members of Congress that we're talking about who are associated with terrorist groups, groups that this country recognizes as terrorist groups. Where does their money come from? Where does their money, su- yeah. their support so true. come from? So true. It comes from some very dangerous yeah. places, yeah. and a lot of this is going to come out very, very public. Yeah, so, and Linda Sassour, too. I mean, Linda Sassour, she's out there, and she's out there, and they're accepting her. And Ocasio-Cortez has pictures of of, uh, of Rashida Tlaib and uh, Ilan Omar, yeah, yeah, it, and Sassour, uh, and they're saying the new women of the United States Congress. And I'm thinking, like, how did we get here? And who's stepping Joe, up? Joe, and why doesn't Joe, Chuck it, Schumer it, just it, say, all right, this stops yeah. right now? Now I'm in charge. I'm pro-Israel. This stops right now. No one's got the guts to do it, Dub, except you, pal. Joe, it's called leadership. It's called courage, and both of those things are lacking. Linda Sarsour is an individual, and we've talked about this many times before. Yes, sir. I mean, just look at her record. You know, one single item, uh, you know, that's relevant. Uh, uh, not so long ago, she stood on stage here in the United States. Uh, with a woman, Rosemia Oda, a woman who was convicted in an Israeli court for the murder, listen to this, for the murder of two civilians, two students who went shopping in a grocery store in Jerusalem. A bomb murdered these two individuals, two students, two innocent students. Uh, She was found guilty of that uh, terrorist act, went to jail in Israel, got out, unfortunately, on a uh, a prisoner exchange 10 years later, ends up in this country uh, uh, up until a short while ago. Linda Sassour is on stage with this terrorist who murdered two young men. Okay, they could have been my sons. She ends up on stage with her here in the United States. Linda Sassour calls this terrorist her heroine. Now, finally, uh, she was kicked out of this country because she got here in yeah. illegally. Yeah. They threw her out of here. She's a terrorist. Yeah. She ended up in Germany. Mm. Guess what? Yesterday, Germany threw her out of wow. the country. Wow. Wow. That Yesterday, is huge. Germany that, threw her out. Joe Pikin with Piscopo in the morning. Dub, before we let you go, and, and, and forgive me for laying into this, but I, I have to ask, Dub, and we got a couple minutes here. If you, you your history, your history with your family going through the Holocaust, like we were talking earlier look, on look, the show, they're finally uh, teaching look, that Joe, in public what school. What makes me tick is my reality. This is my reality. You know, some people say, you know, well, enough about the Holocaust. You know, to me, I grew up with that. I've lived that all my life. Yeah. And the reason for that is, I never had grandparents, Joe. I never had grandparents, not from my mother's side, not from my father's side. I never, I didn't know what it meant to have a grandparent. You know why? Because they were murdered by Nazis because they were Jews. That was their crime. They were sent to gas chambers. That's my reality. No grandparents. My mother went to Auschwitz in 1944. That's real to me. I lived that. And many of her sisters, brothers, nephews, and nieces, guess what? went straight to the gas chambers in 1944 when my mother arrived there. My mother managed to survive. That's my reality of a world of hate, of anti-Semitism, of racism. When you don't stand up to it, when you try to be politically correct, that's what happens. And God forbid that can happen again. Don't make a mistake. Don't think it can't happen here. It can. You're right. Dove, love having you on the show, my friend. Keep the fight, Dove Hyken. Oh, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. All right, my friend. God bless, and we'll talk soon, Dove. Take care. Former Assemblyman Dove.